Hello, my venture friends. We are back into our care packages today. Um, if you didn't watch our previous video, um, I'd like to tell you that we are doing a special tribute for Black History Month um, of an artist study of three amazing artists, one of which we're gonna study today, whose name is Alma Thomas. And so in your care package, you will have a cover sheet that has a picture of her and some of her famous artwork. Isn't that beautiful? And also gives a blurb. So I'm gonna read this out loud to you. This is information I found online. Um, these are, first of all, these are some of her paintings. This is called um, Iris Tulips and John Keels and Crocuses. That's, it's a rainbow type picture. This is a portrait of Alma herself. And the portrait on the right is called Resurrection. And Alma liked to work in these very bright colors um, that she saw around, that she saw in, in the world, in, in nature, in, in the environment. Um, so our project, which is Paint a Rainbow, is gonna attempt to replicate Alma's colorful paintings as shown above. Alma Woodsy Thomas, born September 22nd, 1981 to February 24th, 1978, was an African-American artist and teacher who lived and worked in Washington, D.C., and is now recognized as a major American painter of the 20th century. Thomas is best known for her exuberant, colorful, abstract paintings that she created after her retirement from a 35-year career, um, career teaching art at Washington Shaw Junior High School. Thomas, who is often considered a member of the Washington Color School of Artists, but alternatively classified by some as an expressionist, was the first graduate of Howard University's art department and maintained connections to that university through her life. She achieved success as an African-American female artist despite the segregation and the prejudice of her time. A quote from Alma, which I thought was really amazing and inspirational, goes as follows. Creative art is for all time and is therefore independent of time. It is of all ages of every land. And if by this we mean the creative spirit in man, which produces a picture or a statue is common to the whole civilized world, independent of age, race, and nationality, the statement may stand unchallenged. Alma Thomas, 1970. So I'm gonna set this off to the side and tell you what we have in this care package. What you're going to find is a new set of primary color paints, as well as um, a long legal size piece of white plain paper and a variety of different sponge brushes. So you're gonna have some square sponges that were cut for you. Um, and then you're gonna have two different types of sponge brushes. One has the pointy tip on it you could maybe see here and the other one was cut down to be a square flat tip okay this is in an attempt to um, give you the freedom to create however you'd like you could tell here there's more of um, squares going around and here is some shorter staccato type painting so you could do this however you'd like and um, I want you to get really creative with this I'm gonna show you how how I'm doing it, but of course, um, it is completely up to you. So you can either try to mimic uh, Alma's rainbow, st her straight rainbow type painting here. Again, that was titled Iris Tulips, John Keels, and Crocuses, which is, um, you know, all these beautiful flowers that she's mimicking the colors of. Um, or you could try to do circular motions as this one shows, which again was called Resurrection. So I recommend grabbing from your own stuff at home, just any paper plate you can, so we could kind of make our own paint palette. Um, we're sticking with primaries for this, but we'll also want to get a little bit into mixing our own colors. So we do want to have an orange, and if you remember what colors make orange, is red and yellow, and we'll want to make a little purple. So we'll use our blue and red, okay? So let's go ahead and get to work. 
So to start with, we're going to make our palettes. So let's start with some yellow here. And I'm gonna do another yellow because I'm gonna mix it with the red. Okay. I'm gonna take my red and put a dot of it with the yellow. And then make just a yellow dot, a red dot. Now you can either make a plate for each person or a plate for each color and pass it around, help whatever works best for you. So here's blue. I'm gonna do another smaller dot of blue and add some red to it so we can get some purple. And then this way, if we need to go back, um, we could always go ahead back and and uh, add more paint. So I am going to recommend that you have on hand a small cup of water to clean your brushes off in between, or you could put it in a bowl so maybe it's a little bit easier um, to access for everybody with the short uh, sponges. And of course, a piece of paper towel because we're dealing with paint and also because after you wash your brush off, you wanna blot some of the water out. These are not watercolors, so you don't want the brushes to remain super wet when you apply more paint. So when I thought about this painting, I really was interested, um, I'm going to mix these paints a little bit. I was interested in doing the circular one. It just really spoke to me. I thought it was beautiful and um, so I, I'm, that's the one that I'm gonna try to work on. So if you're using your color palette and your orange is not coming out as good, you're gonna add more yellow, okay? The yellow is what's gonna um, make the red into more of an orange. So you just gotta kind of keep going until you get the desired color. You can use a um, plastic spoon for mixing or uh, whatever you have on hand. If you have any of these small brushes, you can use those for mixing as well. I think I'm just gonna do one more squeeze of yellow and I'll be good. see that um, but it is definitely more orange than red so moving on from there I'm gonna wash my brush off and so now we want to make our purple see it's happening more immediately than the orange. I should have really just put more yellow and just a dot of the red that would have made the orange without me having to mix so many times, but that's okay. So now I have my paint palette, right? I have my rainbow. And you could keep going back and mixing, adding as you need to. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on the on the circle image and for me I thought um, I really want to I don't want to make it centered I'm gonna kind of put it off to the side a little and then build my circles out so it kind of goes out over to one more side so I'm gonna take my palette and um, it doesn't matter what color you start with uh, you could do it however you'd like that's totally your choice I am gonna start with some yellow and I'm going to make a circle here just by making my brush go like this. Making a circle. Okay, so if you just put your brush down with the point on it and twist it around, it'll make a nice, perfect circle. Okay, and again, I'm going to dab my brush off. And when you dab these sponge brushes off, you need to then put them on your paper towel to dry or squeeze them to get the water out, which is what I do. 
Okay, so I'm gonna put that one down off to the side and I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna use my flat brush. Again, you do it however you'd like. If you'd like to start and do big squares going around with your flat sponge, you could do that as well. You could even use the edge if you want like something really narrow but longer than this, you could do the edge. Um, that's up to you. I'm gonna use this one. And I think I'm going to start with my red. So it's as easy as this. I'm just getting cover in the top and I'm just gonna go like a stamp around. And I think I'm gonna do kind of like bricks, a little off center. Um, I'm gonna do two rows of each color. You could do one if you'd rather. And they don't have to be full or perfect. Um, you'll see it's just gonna look really beautiful at the end. Wash my brush off, dab it dry. I'm not worrying about getting a little drops because we are going over it with paint. Okay, so I'm gonna move into my oranges. So you could then, of course, you could switch and start using um, a different type of sponge brush now. I'm gonna continue on with this one for the moment. I might, as I go out, switch to the square. We will see. Okay, what color should I do next? I think I'm gonna move to some, hmm, I think I'll go Just going back and filling in with some of the ones that had excess paint. So as you get here and you can't continue, you're just gonna skip over and start back up where the paper starts again. part of the process, right? So let's see, where do I go now? How about some blue?
So I just, if you noticed on the top, what I did was just added like a half brick here. So it looks like it's continuing. If you get a little paint on your table, don't worry, these are washable paints. Um, or you could always put a tablecloth down. to my favorite color, right? Purple. I love my purple. So there's no more room over here really except this far corner if you could see. So I'm gonna get one in right over here. As my last couple of lines, that's my brush up again. I'm gonna go back to our center color, which was that yellow, nice, bright, vibrant yellow. So I'm gonna rinse my brush, dry it off a little, get the paint off. Okay, painty fingers. And I'm gonna go back to my yellow. did not do a great job at getting the purple off my brush, but that is okay. That's what starts to make your art unique and individual. And so now I'm out of yellow, so I am going to add another squirt of yellow so that I can continue. For the, for the last outline corners, I'm just gonna go back to the next color I have here, which was the red. That's just how I'm choosing to do it. You could do this however you'd like. Okay, so I rinse my brush, clean it off. See, your paper towel is gonna get quite saturated with paint, which is why your fingers are getting dirty. And then I'm gonna go back to my red. Okay. And just add in at the edge here. Don't worry about your table, clean it up afterwards. Just like so. So this is like a really simple, nice art activity um, to do our Alma Woodsy Thomas-esque art pieces. Isn't that beautiful? Inspired by her resurrection painting, one of the paintings she's famous for. So now what you want to do, because this is just plain copy paper, is let this dry. And once it's dry, if the edges have started to curl up, you can put a nice heavy book on it overnight and that'll flatten it right out for you. Um, your other option is to go ahead and glue it down or mount it to like a dark colored um, heavier piece of paper behind it just to kind of frame it out. But I'm gonna leave it just as so and hang it like this. And I will take a picture and show you my finished product. I hope you enjoyed this one.